Good afternoon, and welcome to the drone portion of today's presentation. I am Damien Mooney, and will be introducing you to the Mandela Uni Autonomous Operations Group. Unlike the teaching faculties you heard about earlier today, the Autonomous Group is a research and development lab environment for students who are interested in either work experience related to drone fabrication or students wanting to focus on drone technology for their master's or PhD. The group was formed in late 2017 as a venture by the Advanced Mechatronic Technology Centre and is housed in the north campus of the Nelson Mandela University. The expertise in the lab include two commercial pilots, two instructors, test pilots, two drone pilots, one aircraft designer and one drone technician. The team is experienced in full-size aircraft design and fabrication, composite structures, rapid prototyping and flight test programs. Even with the experience on hand, what truly makes the lab unique is the drive and passion of the students who are part of the daily projects. Students are encouraged and expected to be involved in all the projects, not just their own. You might arrive as a mechatronic, mechanical or electrical engineer, but you will leave having the skills of all three. Unfortunately, we can only support 12 students full-time in the lab and assist with a few external projects, which means the competition to get through the door is tough. Let's have a look at some of the projects from the past two years. We'll focus on the project specific to student research. The first aircraft to take flight was Franken Drone, a 4 meter, 10 kilogram payload carrying research aircraft. The aircraft was a rapid development prototype tasked with carrying 5 kilograms worth of research equipment between its two fuselages. The design called for an aircraft with full redundancy, which resulted in the twin fuselage design. In essence, this is two aircraft flying formation that are completely independent of each other two motors, two sets of control surfaces, two flight computers, two power sources and two receivers. Either side of the aircraft can fail or be shut down completely and the mission is able to continue using just the one side of the aircraft. This is our workhorse aircraft for testing hybrid power sources. Our next aircraft, Big Red, a 3 meter diameter, 25 kilogram multi-rotor hovering drone is our second hybrid power testing aircraft. This drone can lift 60 kilograms worth of cargo or herbicide with its electric motors and remain airborne for two hours when using a petrol generator as a range extender. The total thrust of the system peaks at 120 kilograms, meaning it could lift a 90 kilogram human with ease. Solar power has potential for aircraft due to the large surface area available on aircraft wings. Unfortunately, the amount of power available is not suitable for load carrying aircraft but is appropriate for long endurance surveillance aircraft. We have started preliminary research into a solar powered aircraft with a seven hour solar endurance and a two hour battery reserve to act as a wildlife tracking aircraft. During a period where we were starting to need bigger and more powerful electric motors, we experimented with a cheaper solution of joining four smaller motors together to form one large power drive. One of our mechanical engineering students designed built and tested the motor with minimal input from supervisors. The final design was an aircraft grade electric motor that could be interchanged with a petrol motor on a small microlight. The motor spins a 1.5 meter propeller at 4000 RPM delivering 80 kilograms of static thrust. The project was a success costing 60% of the equivalent imported motor. If you look closely at the bottom left of the slide you'll notice that the student wasn't too confident in his work for the initial tests. 2018, we started the first attempts at using artificial intelligence to control drone behavior. In other words, use computers to replace the human pilot, making real-time decisions based on their surroundings. A mechatronics master's candidate developed a flight computer and camera that could be installed in a drone aircraft. The computer was taught to get airborne by itself, fly to a field, and then perform its own search pattern until it recognized the shape or object it had been told to look for. Once it had identified the object, it would perform some basic measurements for wind factor and drift and position itself to do a slow flyby and drop a tracking beacon next to the object in a manner suitable for a search and rescue scenario. The drone would then report the location to the control room and return for landing. Test flights at a controlled airfield environment were successful, but unfortunately further real-world tests are on standby due to aviation regulations. The same master's student is now a PhD candidate, having moved his research to a ground-based drone in the form of an agricultural farming drone. In a similar manner to the aircraft, the farming drone has been developed to perform without human intervention. 
the solar and battery powered drone has been taught to navigate its surroundings to move between rows of crops in a plantation. At the start of each day, the drone moves to a known sample of the crop to be monitored for that day and through a series of photos develops a 3D image of the crop that it is to protect. It then begins its patrol through the crops, identifying the protected crop and removing all other unwanted plant growth with the use of a robotic arm below the drone. Unfortunately, the COVID situation hasn't allowed for filming of the drone in its final form, but the videos show the basic vehicle navigating obstacles and the test platform where multiple photos of a crop are being taken for the image recognition computer to generate a 3D image of the protected crop. In early 2019, we started with the development of a security drone with artificial intelligence capabilities. The drone is designed to be housed in an automatic dome, one per residential neighborhood or one per farm. On an alarm being triggered, the drone will intercept the signal being sent to the security control room and open its dome to be airborne and overhead the triggered alarm in less than 30 seconds. The drone provides live footage to the control room while also attempting through AI to recognize humans and human movement. In the event of a human making a hasty retreat, the drone will follow them advising the response team who are still en route of the possible new location of a suspect. This is an ongoing project needing collaboration with property owners and law enforcement agencies in the future. Nelson Mandela University has recently implemented the Marine Robotics Unit to assist ocean science researchers in obtaining data from our oceans using water-based drones and sensors. With the majority of the drones being battery-powered, with limited endurance, the drones are transported out to sea using ships for deployment at the point of interest. The cost and availability of ships has limited these drone deployments, with a call for assistance from airborne drones to transport marine drones out to sea. At the Autonomous Operations Lab, we have begun testing on a hybrid aircraft known as a VTOL, vertical takeoff or landing aircraft. In order to transport marine sensors weighing 50 kilograms to a distance of 50 kilometers out to sea, we have had to develop a heavy lift fixed wing airplane with the ability to take off vertically from the university, travel out to sea, and then hover to deploy sensors before returning to land. To achieve these results, we have used our experience with hybrid powered aircraft to merge electric motors for power and petrol motors for endurance into a new painted design petrol-powered aircraft that is able to tilt its two petrol motors vertically to provide lifting thrust and then lower them for forward flight. Smaller electric motors are used to provide stability during the vertical takeoff and landing. Testing has begun on scaled models using the flight control systems to be used in the full-sized aircraft. The test aircraft has taken off vertically, climbed to altitude and then transitioned into forward flight as an aeroplane before returning into the hover and landing. Development of the full-size version has run in parallel where possible, with a 7-meter version due for testing later this year.